One of the things we do have, I, I spoke about, is drive-by-wire. The reason I believe in drive-by-wire for race cars, as I said, coming from an OE background, it's the greatest um, improvement to vehicle drivability you know, in the last 30 or 40 years. So drive-by-wire allows you to completely decouple what the driver's pedal is doing to what the throttle plate is doing. So most people, when you say drive by wire in the performance sector, go, oh, I've got a, I've got a Commodore, I've got a Falcon, it feels terrible, the throttle response is really slow. Yeah, that's, that's, you hear that often. Yeah, and drive by wire is done that, done like that in the OE to make the vehicle drivable, to minimize clunks, make, it suits the overall customer. But you've got, you've got to set the car up for, like you were saying before, 100,000 drivers, not one. Yeah, not one, that's right. Now, with the hardware that's in a, in like, so this has uh, got a VE, VE V6 throttle body, 72 mil throttle body. There is zero pressure drop at 750 horsepower across that throttle body. Like, you know, when I say zero, every bit of flow across an orifice will have some pressure drop, but it's like less than one KPA. I see a lot of things have a throttle body that is far bigger than it needs to be. Like I think if you look at uh, Quentin Feast V8, it's another thing I think is a very well developed, very considered and well studied package is that it's got like a 90 mil throttle body on it because, and it's a, a very powerful car, but the reason is like the air boosted with a higher density doesn't need a 102 mil throttle body for that sort of application and same here we've got a throttle body off a uh, you know we've seen them on v6s 400 odd 430 odd horsepower and we've got good range of authority for the drivability in doing that we can the the hardware that's on there is as i said a, a commodore throttle body the motor on that throttle body has the ability to open that from zero to fully open in 75 milliseconds. I don't know too many cable systems that can actually, if you stomp on the pedal, can go that fast. <laughs> so the in terms of the hardware limitations, if you want the throttle to open that quickly, it can. The problem that with doing that, and this is the problem with cable type systems, is that, that how you meter the air or how you manage the air and how you fuel for that air that's going into the engine is very, very difficult because it's just a step change. Now with drive-by-wire, you can set up the drive-by-wire to give you an initial inrush of air. It gets the manifold to atmospheric and then the fueling can, can catch up. So it makes your transient fuel challenge much easier, but it also allows you to keep the throttle in the range of authority. The throttle doesn't have to be any more open than is required to deliver the manifold pressure. So if you're in a naturally aspirated engine, the manifold pressure, if you're at 2000 RPM, you might only need to have the throttle open 40% and that will probably 30% if it's something that's late model with a big throttle body on it. Anything more than 30% makes no difference to... But with a cable, you might be you might have that open at 70%. Yeah, or 100%. Yeah. And when, if you get wheel spin, say you're a race car and you're driving in the wet or you're a race car that's traction limited, which all most race cars are these days, if you get wheel spin, you've got to come off the throttle like 70% to get actual authority of airflow going through the engine. Whereas with drive-by-wire, we can have um, wide open throttle wide open pedal, this is the, this is the uh, I even do it myself. Most people talking about drive by wire, there's two distinctions, there's wide open pedal, which is the driver input, and there's wide open throttle, which is the, um, the result of what the drive by wire motor is going to. So wide open pedal at 2000 RPM on a naturally aspirated car might only give you 30% throttle plate opening, and that's all you need. Then as soon as you back off 5% on the throttle, you'll end up being able to control yeah. the torque a, a lot better. One of the other things that um, drive by wire does is it allows you to build a, essentially a torque mapped pedal input profile. So what we can do with an M1 is we can have a series of switchable pedal maps. For this customer, we've, we've settled on four. For some rally cars, they might choose nine, you know, because you might have an on-road one, you might have a snow. So with that pedal map, we can control the delivery of torque at it for at any profile we want. Um, one of the, most people can't see the benefit of having more than one or two, like a wet map and a dry map. But what you also have to consider is that um, with, a, with drive by wire, you might um, want to, like with a traditional turbo car, usually the least boost you can have is what's attached to the wastegate. So if you've got the minimum boost set to four pounds, well, you're gonna get the torque that's at four pounds. 
With drive-by-wire, we can have a map that feels like a naturally aspirated engine. So essentially it doesn't see boost. We can close the throttle sufficiently, even a wide open pedal, so that this 3.4 litre, 700, or 3.3 litre, 750 horsepower engine could at wide open throttle just deliver 250 horsepower like a like an XU1 Carby engine. And that is very, very useful in the wet, so that the driver um, being able to go fast for unless you're at the supercar level most you've got to think about most drivers are not at that level and the easier the car is to drive the easier it is to drive fast when we talk about the the drive by wire that's some of the benefits like we can limit the the torque to as little or as much as we want the other secondary benefit and one of the things i firmly believe in is that we also have a fair bit of um, failure management so if we blow off a wastegate control hose and we've got unlimited boost we can shut the throttle up just like any late model turbo car will do factory turbo car so that's a that's a for something like this which is a very very um <laughs> very very hard to replace engine sort of you know, quite precious that's a very significant benefit but even you know i uh just in my own race car i do the same thing it's like for engine over temp engine oil pressure we can close the throttle up any sort of over boost um it just gives you another another control knob to be able to tailor the response of the engine that you want and a lot of people are sort of scared by it but drive-by wire is not going away all the new engines are drive-by wire because of the of the benefits it, it, it gives you and um, yeah so what we've done with the with a race car compared to a road car there's a lot of different um, aspects you have to consider but with a race car for it to be easy to drive and fast, you want a nice linear progression of torque so that 50% pedal is roughly 50% of the available torque. 100% pedal is 100% of the available torque. And you know, in that zero to 20% on a road car, zero to 20% gets you probably in a lot of cars almost 50% torque because they want that what we call step off to be able to feel more more uh, lively than what they really are. With a race car, we don't need to be driving around the pits or mm. in low speed corners with that instant step off. We're willing to trade off having to push the pedal another five or 10% to get a more linear response. And a lot of VVT naturally aspirated engines I do, that we can tailor the cam timing and the VVT to spread that torques so that it, if you drive at 40% pedal or 60% pedal at the same RPM, you can proportionally scale that torque. And like drivers that drive like that, they, they talk about driving like most of the time if the if the car's not grip limited you drive it wide open right but when the conditions change you're wet or if it's a speedway car or off-road buggy or something like that being able to modulate that torque once they've had that experience it's it's something that i want to give up so um in going with the with the switchable um pedal response maps we also have like the switchable boost so we've got like many, many, many cars all throughout the years have had switchable boost, but we can actually change the boost as well. So if we were doing, we can have engine load based or engine coolant temperature based boost, all these other things that can factor into saying what the boost limit for that condition is. And then the software will choose low. It'll choose the lowest boost level and then just um, filter into or filter out of that boost. So for instance, something like this, um, we can say, well, we'll run at 750 horsepower for and for 30 seconds if we sustain that power output. And, and I, we do a calculation in the MoTeC, which is in all the M1 packages. It's an average load. And essentially what that is, it's a time-based average of the current load. So if you just went from zero throttle to wide open and held it there, the average load would increase at a steady rate until it actually was the full load that the engine's running at. By carefully tuning that, you can put another um, protection mechanism into the engine. So we might, so it's, it's a sort of an extension of transient overboost. So we can make the engine deliver a lot of horsepower. And then we might say, well, we only want it to deliver that horsepower for 30 seconds continuously. And then we'll start to ramp it down and we can set what that average horsepower is. So by having drive by wire, having th torque based mapping, we can do that. Um, in the event that the car's driven on the track, we're not allowed to run traction or launch control, but we've got 
almost 90% of what traction control is. We've got a very linear pedal. So typically to get traction control working on a car, the torque delivery has to be very linear to start off with. What do a lot of people try to do? They have a car that's almost undrivable and they go, oh, I'll put traction on it because traction control will mitigate the, the, the peakiness of it. But all it is is the traction control is working over time to just, it, it undershoots, overshoots, and it's very, very hard to dial that in. If the same people who are wanting traction control then looked at a drive-by-wire system that was um, appropriately mapped, what would happen is that linear response um, is a is a much easier task for traction control. I mean, a lot of the times you wouldn't need traction control. And I think a classic example of that is, is Clinton Feast's car again. Like that vehicle is, a, is so repeatable and so consistent with, you know, you can just jump in, jump on the throttle and, and launch. And for, me, for a large part of that car's development, I know that it wasn't running traction control. So that gives you an indication of what a proper 3D um, mapped drive-by-wire system can deliver for you. The other example with a turbo car, often turbo cars will spin the tires and then you come off the throttle, you come back on the throttle, and it's like this J-curve response as you're yeah, in and out of turbo yeah, boost. Absolutely. Now everyone's experienced it. Anyone who's had any turbo car has mm. experienced it. But with drive-by-wire, you can keep the drive-by-wire throttle plate angle to be um, at such a point that you've still got range of authority over the, the, the airflow control into the engine. So what that does is it allows you to just have to lift off the throttle a little bit, not doing these big movements. So essentially, if so you think... The throttle of, blade's only moving a little bit. Yeah, because it, it's not fully fully yeah. open. It's just it's it's open enough to provide the level of torque because most people go fully open, but the difference between sixty and one hundred percent may be zero or one or two kPa of manifold pressure. So, by working that in with the boost control, and the boost control is um, a function of throttle position as well. And like a lot of people do that, but to to sort of link that in with keeping the range of authority on the throttle so that it the slight change will automatically ch start um, reducing the torque. Like if you just think, say you've got a, an old school drive-by-wire LS, you step into the power wide open, you do a burnout or a skid or, you know, like everyone's prone to do. And then as you lift off the throttle, the wheels will still keep turning. You lift off another 20%, the wheels are still turning. Like you haven't done any effect to the airflow. You might have to come back to 30% yeah. pedal to actually, um, to mitigate the skid. So that's one thing about trying to map this torque control is to make the driver response a little bit more natural and intuitive to tailor it around. So we could have 20% throttle might be 200 um, newton meters, 30% throttle might be 320 newton meters. And it's sort of like each one is a geometric progression of the, of the throttle position below. And essentially you can shape the torque curve like that. Like we've shaped the torque curve so that to look after the drive line, like we take it up to the maximum and then we just hold it until we reach the airflow limit of the turbine. So of the, of the compressor in this case, actually. So um, yeah, I, I, you know, coming from an, an OE thinking, I try and fit the, the, the knobs that we've got to be able to change, to be able to tailor that response.